All right, so in this video, we are going to talk about EAP frameworks, right? So it's not an um, authentication method. First of all, let me make it very, very clear. Authentication methods are what we have discussed in the earlier video. Those were .1x, PAP, MSCAP, uh, you know, uh, Kerberos, the, those were the authentication method. But EAP is the entire framework. Well, you can actually, you know, correlate it with the OSI model. So OSI model is not just a single protocol, but it's a set of entire protocol, right? It's give you a framework exactly the same way EAP is a framework. Now it is you, it is made for, or it is developed to protect uh, sub assets which are you know dot one eight zero two dot one x based wireless devices uh wire devices and what devices connected through the vpn network as well right so when we talk about the components this might sound very familiar to you uh, if you have been coming if you have been watching the earlier videos so the first component is the supplicant which is the end user it could be mobile devices uh, you know, laptop, desktop, connecting to the network through the wired or the wireless uh, medium, right? Next, we have authenticator. If you remember, the, these were the routers, switches, access point, VPN devices. Authentication server. These are the radius, uh, radius servers, AAA servers, providing instructions like, uh, you know, open radius servers, Cisco ICE. Uh, tank X servers, the, the, those were the, you know, major components, major components, I would say, yeah. Now, if you look at the flow, this is how the flow really looks like. Let me make it even more bigger. You can see uh, there are majorly four company, four flow. The first starts with the initialization, then we have initiation, then we have negotiation and the authentication. So if you see in the initial initial package where a kind of, uh, you know, where the initialization happened, where the authenticator device, the, the one which is which sits in between, this is basically responsible for detecting a new device. So let's say if you have new supplicant, maybe connected through the mobile devices or, you know, maybe a new employee or, you know, guest, uh, guest network or guest devices coming to the enterprise network or maybe he's just a business partner, you know, want to get access to the wireless so that he can access his own, uh, you know, resources. Or maybe he want to access the internet, but uh, when he talked to the, you know, ID team, they can't really allow them to access straight away, right? So for that, the ID team probably need to allocate some uh, guest username and password. But even to do that, the guest need to authenticate himself and verify his uh, system as well, verify his uh, iPad or, you know, or maybe his laptop or something. So this is all a part of EAP TLS or, or the dot one X method. So first of all, the moment he connects to the wireless or he, he get in touch with the wireless in, you know, area or maybe he trying to connect it with the cable, the authenticator, maybe router switches or access point, detect the new device, okay? And this is what you see in the, init uh, in the initial packets, it detect the new packet, and in the uh, initial phase it identity, you know, once it has been detected, uh, you know, the user sends the identity request, and then the response comes back to, to the, you know, to the authentication server. Uh, but usually the authenticator sends what's your identity and then user supplicant sends the sends his identity information about his system information, all the credentials as well, right? Then there's a radius communication start happening. Uh, radius, I'll talking, I'll be talking about it in the next video, but for now just understand it's a protocol used between the authenticator and the authentication server. Okay, so all the router switches, access point, talk to the authentication server with the help of radius protocol. So this is what used in between them. And then there, if because we are making use of EAP TLS, that's why we need to have a certificate based authentication. So that's where the negotiation and the authentication start happening. And based on the final authentication itself, the the system will be allowed to talk to the you know the resources or maybe he get access to the wireless network or maybe he can access to the router switches or servers or internet as well whatever he want 
So that's how the EAP framework is really supporting the dot one X or I would say dot one X is supporting the EAP framework. All right. I hope you got the idea. If you have any question, do ask me in the comment. I would love to answer them. Thank you. Thank you.